Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Coffee with Carl. We are live on February 8th, and I just want to say uh, thank you for everybody tuning in. Ray Flynn, it's your favorite show. I really appreciate that, and I love you. Uh, Lynn Minnick, watching from a well flow, a recovery inspection with the guys from Dufford. Uh, give Uva a big high five for me. I love that guy. And uh, Josh, it's a good, those are a good group of guys. Uh, hopefully the uh, well tests all right. I want to thank everybody for tuning in for Coffee with Carl. I'm drinking coffee from Island Coffee Traders, uh, otherwise known as Donut Depot or, well, what we call Donut Depot. Um, their coffee is great because it tastes like donuts somehow. I don't know. Uh, but we got a great show for you today. It's going to be a fast show. We're going to crank it right through again. I'm trying to keep these things about 10 minutes so I don't bore everybody. So without further ado, let's go. It's the time of the week once again. Attention, please. It's coffee we call for all of you who need a helping hand. In real estate world, it's coffee we call. Whether you're selling or buying, there's so many things to consider. Grab a paper and pen and your favorite brew. This informative recap's coming live to you. It's the time of the week once again. It's coffee with Carl. All right. So I'm going to do things a little bit different this week in that um, our questions with Carl segment which we typically had towards the end, I'm going to switch it up so people can call any time, right? Because what I found is I'm streaming on Facebook, I'm streaming on Twitter, I'm streaming on YouTube, and all of them have a little bit of time shift. So by the time we get towards the end of the show, some people don't know if they should call or not call. So now, call any time, and I will pick up the phone. Of course, I will always give my... Um, my little disclaimer that it is my real phone, so if somebody does give me a call and they're not calling for the show, I'll just have to be right back for a second. Uh, so feel free to call in anytime with any questions, comments, uh, or just to talk to me. The phone number is 860-813-2275. That's 860-813-CARL for those who like to spell their phone numbers. And with that, let's start the news. Of course, besides calling in, you can text me, you can put comments on uh, Facebook or YouTube or wherever you are. I will answer them. I should be able to see them. So if you have questions or anything like that, feel free to uh, reach in, uh, uh, to reach out and I will answer them. So in this week's news, I want to first give a quick plug to a contest that we're having. And let me show here. So um, the Glastonbury, yes, I do accept crank calls, Catherine McNary. As a matter of fact, I am so surprised that nobody has crank called me yet because it seems like just, a, just an amazing opportunity for people. Uh, oh, and there's my mom, my most favorite fan, coming, coming live from Florida, sunny Florida. I hope you have a safe trip back. I'll see you later today. Um, but a quick plug to Wendy Lang for our Super Bowl giveaway in the Glastonbury office. So uh, sponsored by me and Wendy, we're giving away a 65-inch TV along with free wings from Giovanni's in Glastonbury. All you have to do is go and um, like Wendy's page, like my page, and comment. If you go to the scoop, glastonbury.com, uh, you can go and... Um, do everything there to be entered to win. The drawing is tomorrow with the TV pickup on Friday, just in time for the big game. So make sure you do that. Um, in our news, I want to thank everybody for 16 years of real estate. Oh, let me fix my thing. So a lot of you guys commented on February 2nd, I celebrated my 16th uh, year of being a licensed real estate agent. And February is always a great time because it is a time full of anniversaries. So uh, not only is it my 16th anniversary on uh, the 2nd, 
but also yesterday we celebrated our cheers to four years, our four year anniversary of Carl Gild and Associates uh, being its own independent brokerage. And it was really uh, wonderful to celebrate this, of course, with all of my agents um, who really make this happen, right? It's, it's not Carl Gild and Associates without the Associates. So I'm really thankful to those guys for sticking with me. And I think we've built something really, really wonderful. And uh, I hope that we have many, many years to come. And I know we will have many years to come because a lot of the agents here are dedicated to uh, the brokerage and the success of the brokerage. And just as I am as much dedicated to their success and making sure that they are successful in the future. So uh, thank you all for your support, all of our clients, all the community, uh, the agents, really everybody. It takes a village and we are so lucky to have the support systems we have. And I just wanted to say thank you to everybody for that. So um, our next segment is an agent spotlight. Now, I don't have a, I don't have a uh, bumper for that yet, but I'm going to make one because I think it's important to highlight uh, agents in our brokerage who are doing great things. And this week's Agent Spotlight is none other than Lynn Minnick. So let me move this down. So Lynn is a wonderful, wonderful person. She is celebrating her 22nd year as a realtor. She was with me from day one when I opened the brokerage, and I am proud to call her a friend and coworker and just a lovely person. Let me read uh, her profile. So Lynn is celebrating her 22nd year in Central Connecticut real estate and brings experience in all aspects of the business with unique special specializations in green and international real estate. So she's actually certified with green, which is sustainable housing, as well as uh, CIPS, certified international uh, property specialists. So she is very big on travel and, and uh, things outside of the country. Her clients appreciate her attention to detail, positive energy, and the fact that she's with them every step of the way through the transactions. She's been active with uh, the Greater Hartford Association of Realtors, where she served 15 years on various committees to work for the greater good of the real estate community and its members, and was a founding member of the association's chapter of the Young Professionals Network, which is great. She holds a Bachelor of Arts degrees in French, and while she's native to Connecticut, she lived in Quebec for 10 years as a child and studied abroad in Italy. She's very actively involved in the East Hampton community that she calls home, and she has won a Friend of Education Award, and she's an advocate for the National Kidney Foundation and a living kidney donor. When not working or volunteering to support community events, Lynn loves to travel with her husband and two kids. Her kids are great, and her husband's great too. Play with her Siberian cat, listen to podcasts, reads, drink copious amounts of coffee. Cheers. And plan for more trips. She's always got a trip planned, or she should always have a trip plan. Uh, she and her family have been hosting international exchange students through the Rotary since 2013. And with her house powered by solar since 2011, she's also our resident solar expert. Lynn, you are awesome in so many ways. I also want to give a plug to her, um, my green life uh, in realestate.com, her blog, oops, what did I do? Um, my green life and real estate.com, which is a really, um, oh, I messed that up too. I'm sorry. I messed that all up, but go to her blog, my green life and real estate.com. It's a really, really awesome blog where she writes about her house. It was a great post on her, um, uh, on the history of her home and how it's gone through generations. I can't recommend Lynn highly enough. If anybody's looking for a realtor who will take great care of everything, um, you know, she is great. And oh, and we're getting a bunch of comments. Love Lynn Minnick. Lynn is just terrific. Everybody knows it, right? I'm preaching to the choir that she is just an amazing person. 
I will also say that she has helped so much in mentoring of agents, new agents who have come into the brokerage. She's a wealth of information, always professional, just awesome. So I digress. I won't uh, uh, keep going on, but I could keep going on about it because she really is just a fantastic person. So I want to thank you, Lynn, for your years and years of service, not only to the real estate community, but to the community at large. And of course, to Carl Geil and Associates. Thank you for being a part of us. And, um, and I just can't thank you enough. So, okay, without further ado, we're going to keep moving on to questions with Carl. I told you we're going to move fast. Sorry about that. I clicked the wrong button. Not only is this questions with Carl, but this is also going to be a home maintenance tip too, which I have a bumper for as well. So uh, this week's combined hope ma home maintenance tip along with questions with Carl is all about permits. So this question um, and uh, topic came in from my uncle Elwin who uh, wanted to know or wanted to discuss the importance of permits and why you should have permits and do everything permitted. So, uh, and I know what you're thinking. Carl, it's my land, it's my property, I'll do whatever I want. This is freedom, and I agree. However, it is important from a real estate perspective to do the proper permitting, and I'm going to tell you what I run into when uh, those things are not done. A common scenario is I go to uh, somebody's house and they're looking to sell their property and we do a, a full walk around of their home and I find out that their basement is finished and there is no talk about a finished basement on their property card or anything of that nature. So that always uh, leads me to ask, I see that you have a finished basement, did you do any permitting? And uh, most of the time, uh, they'll say, oh, yeah, we took out permits. Uh, or they'll say, no, you know, we did that ourselves. How that can be problematic within the transaction process is that an appraiser may find that those permits are not, uh, were never pulled, and they may want you to pull them. Or there's a situation where I can't market the house properly because you have an extra bathroom or, um, you know, there's an addition that was put on that was not permitted. All of those things can uh, become problematic when we go to sell the property. So it's easiest to just get a permit up front. What does that entail? Going down to the town hall, telling them what you want to do, paying your permit fee, and them saying, yep, no problem to do it. You have the work completed. You have them inspect it and then they close out the permit. One quick tip I'll tell you, especially if you hire contractors, you wanna make sure that there's a permit fee in there and that they close out the permit afterwards. Contractors are very good at pulling permits and not necessarily closing them out. So uh, very commonly we find open permits on houses that, uh, that have just never been closed out. So. The building department has your house on file and you can go down there and, and, and check everything and see what permits are open and see what aren't. Um, and you want to make sure that that file is intact prior to selling. Sometimes it makes sense to, if you've done unpermitted work, to get out ahead of that so it doesn't become problematic within the transaction. So that is this week's home maintenance tip. Um, Nobody has called in or texted. Hold on. Let me just double check everything. No. Nope. No questions. No call-ins. Once again, I'm so surprised that nobody crank calls me or anything like that. I mean, it's just, I'm teeing up the opportunity. All my friends in high school, all my clients who we joke around with, nobody wants to crank call me or anything like that. Anyways, I'm sorry. That's all the show we have for this week. I do want to give a, a big thank you to everybody who helps me with the show, which I haven't done before, and I don't know why I haven't. 
Uh, my wife and daughter who help me with ideas, and of course, Sierra, uh, my executive assistant, who helps me tremendously. Christopher Parker, who is doing my wonderful graphics for me, which is great. Oh, and look at this. We have a call. Let's open this up. Hold on. Coffee with Carl, you're on the air. Oh, and look at this. We have a call. Let's oh. open this is this is my Uncle Elwin here, and uh, so there is a delay. And Uncle Elwin, you may want to mute the your computer. Hey, Carl. Tell him. This is great. I'm walking away from the computer. Yeah, there you go. Walk away from the computer. That's right, because I can hear myself. I, I know. If you tell the folks that how often the result of um, the permit questions ends up with a lower offer. Oh, a lower uh, offer. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't, the, the question about an open permit or that whole, who did the work or has this been inspected? Yeah. Has ultimately going to affect the buyer's offer and it's most likely going to be lower than otherwise. Yeah, that's a really good point. So, uh, and and I'm going to hang up on you now, Uncle Alwyn. Thanks for calling in. And, and thanks for being a great supporter of the show. Well, I, I love you, man. I love you, too. Bye-bye. All right, bye. So, my Uncle Alwyn makes a great point, right? If buyers go and check their permits and there's unpermitted work, or even if it's during the process of the inspections and things of that nature, um, you can you know, that can 100% affect your value in so many different ways, whether it's the appraised value, whether it's the buyer's offer's value, whatever it is, um, you can definitely, uh, that can affect the value. So you want to make sure those are tightened up. Uh, did you say how to close out the permit? Yeah, so closing out the permit, basically, you go down to the town hall and you say, this permit's open, I need to close it out. A lot of times they'll just have to do a final inspection Hopefully no repairs are, are uh, to be completed, but uh, once they do that, they'll sign off on it and say your permit's closed, and it, they'll basically they will approve the permit, and then uh, that'll be it. Definitely talk to your building departments, your local building departments, uh, and find out what their process is. A lot of times it's different depending upon what type of work you're having completed. There could be multiple inspections with if you're say building a garage there's a foundation inspection framing electrical roughing etc etc there's a lot involved with with doing something like that uh, so you definitely want to talk with your town and your building officials to make sure that you're doing the right thing uh, is that somebody calling me no it's not anybody else uh, and I appreciate Uncle Ellen for calling in you finally made it on the air I know you wanted to he had some great feedback on the show. He hates the countdown timer, uh, <laughs> which uh, is, I just love my Uncle Alwyn. So I appreciate everybody who um, who tunes in. And with that, we're going to end the show, and I'll see you guys next week on another episode of Coffee with Carl. It's the time of the week once again. Attention, please, it's Coffee with Carl. For all of you who need a helping hand in real estate world, it's Coffee with Carl. Whether you're selling or buying, there's so many things to consider. Grab a paper and pen and your favorite brew. This informative recap's coming live to you. It's the time of the week once again. It's Coffee with Carl.